Welcome to Toy Hill Studio. My name is Kendall Kessler. I was going to do another Skyline Beauty painting, but then I was looking at this Center of My Mind painting. I have lots of different collections, and these are paintings that you either like because of the way they look, or you don't, but um, you can't bring your biases into things you like to see. It's a music without words. But uh, lots of times, after I've done one of these, and I look at it, I start to see something in it because when I did this one, I really wanted it to be a suggestions painting. That's another series I have where I paint in an abstract, expressionist way, and then if something shows up, I bring it out and make it stronger. So what I'm going to do is try to bring out the very, very small things I'm seeing in this and put this in my stages of my artwork collection. I have somewhere you can see the progression of my paintings and you can get prints of different stages, which I thought was a really nice thing since once you've gone to the next stage, well, then the first stage is gone, but not in my profile. Uh, a lot of them are, are not gone in my profile, in my um, portfolio. Boy, I'm tired. <laughs> okay, this is going to be really, really hard. And I, if you can see these things, you have got really good eyesight because it is so tiny. Okay, if you look right through here, there's a little tiny fish pointing towards the right. There's the mouth, there's the eye, and there's the tail. As I said, if you can see that, you've really got great eyesight. But artists, we spend so much time drawing and taking things apart and putting them back together when we draw that I think we tend to notice things that um, not everyone does. Okay, that one is really hard. Now, look up here. You can probably see this one. It looks like there's a fin there, a tail there, and kind of like a shark. And then over here, that one really looks like one of those goldfish with those really pretty long tails. So I've got my signing brush because this is going to be so hard and I have a very small brush for that. If I can't do it, I can't do it, but I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to start with that really, really tiny, kind of like a angelfish shape or, you know, there's all different kinds of fish. Oh, all those wonderful aquarium fish you see everywhere. Seriously doubt that I'm going to be able to do this, but I'm going to just try and bring it out. Okay, there's the tail, top part of the fish, and then the mouth. Well, messed it up a little, I think. And then the eye was right there. Eh. <laughs> Didn't think I was going to be able to do a real good job. It's just too small. I need a, a smaller brush. But anyway, now you definitely can see it. And the other ones are going to be a lot easier. Now I can go back into that because of all my experience and I can actually make it look a lot better. But um, don't want to spend a lot of time on it. So I might, after I'm done, go back into it. Okay, this one is going to be much easier to do. Lots of times when I do this kind of painting where I want something to show up, fish show up. I guess it's all these swirling brush marks. That's why the fish show up. But I've, seen, I've done lots of things. One time a fox showed up. Just all kinds of different things show up. But you have to really look. And many times I thought there's nothing there. <laughs> and then I go back into it and see it. Now, the problem with doing this is that I'm going to bring these shapes out. But then it's going to really change the painting a lot. And as I've said lots of times, for me and for I think most artists, it's not so much what we're painting uh, what, what it looks, what it's looking like, but how it looks as artwork. And this is going to make these areas really stick out. And yeah, just as I thought, I think they're sticking out too much now. You may not. But, uh, so which means I'm going to have to either bring out more forms or um, go back into those forms and soften them or something. So I think what I'll do is probably just bring out some more forms. Um, I know this is kind of pushing it, but I see another fish right there. It really is a, a very interesting series. I, I'm real proud of, of doing this. I think it's a, a really just, uh, it's challenging and it's very interesting. And it's because, as I've said, oftentimes when I see work that's not supposed to have any subject matter, it's just, it is supposed to be what we call pure art or non-objective art, whatever you want to call it, where it's an arrangement by an artist of colors and textures and what have you, but it's not any specific shape. And then you just react to it that way. Okay, another little fish. Let's see what else I can bring out. I'm not seeing that much more. I mean, I'd be really pushing it. 
minnows. <laughs> I don't know. But as I said, it's starting to, for me, it's starting to kind of mess up. So maybe what I'll do is rather than trying to keep finding little fish, is I will just add, use another brush and just, just add some more lines into this so that those lines aren't sticking out too much. And they're, they're not bad or anything, but um, they're putting a type of contrast into this that wasn't there before I started. So that's um, something I want to, so I'll bring out a little bit more in the rest of it. But I don't think I'm going to bring out any more shapes. Just need to incorporate some of those dark areas so that they're not sticking out so much. And then as always, lots of times I go into it afterwards, I may work on the fish a little more. Yeah, that's what it needs. It needs to balance out. And I'm going to use another color too. Just keep using this dark purple. Use another color. Use some green into it. And just kind of bring things out and not as strong. Really did like the way this turned out as a non-objective, non-figurative painting. So I'm real glad I'm going to still have that in my portfolio because I didn't want to lose it. I really liked it. But I just thought, this is cool. There's a little tiny fish right there. And if you can see, like I said, you got really good eyes. Even after I went into it, you're probably having a hard time seeing it. Kind of messed up the tail a little bit, and I might go back into that. I don't know. It would be kind of funny putting this in my portfolio and saying, do you see a little tiny fish in the center? But, uh, you know, we all see differently. It, very true. Anybody that does portraits knows that. People really do see things in front of their eyes differently. Um, no one really knows why. Oh yeah, that's helping a lot, I think. Got the signature right there. I don't want to mess up my signature. I have to do it again, because it is tr tricky to sign these little tiny paintings. It's a very small painting. It's only like um, three by two inches. And as I said, I don't, these, so a lot of these demo ones I don't have for sale because they're on really cheap paper with cheap paint. But you can get great archival prints beautiful large and small prints on just about anything including face masks. The wall art ones are really nice. Got one of mine on a yoga mat and I was so impressed how accurate it is, how beautiful it is. They do a great job. Yeah, see what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going back into this painting again because those lines were kind of getting a little too strong for the rest of the painting. I know that sounds weird probably, but you know if you painted you'd understand. Trust me, you would. <laughs> it becomes more and more just how it looks, not what it looks like. But that's not for everyone. There are, as I said before, there are lots of photorealists, and that's what they do. They like to really just copy a photograph, and that's not for me, but that's certainly nothing wrong with that. Estes did a wonderful job with that. Some beautiful paintings done completely from photographs. Okay. I think I'm not going to do a whole lot more. I'm really sorry that I didn't quite get that. I mean, it had a perfect little tail. <laughs> and so I might try to go back into it. I might have to make it a little bit bigger. Um, I knew this was not going to be a very long one, which is good since we all have so much to do. I think that I might do a little more on the goldfish because um, I would like to bring out the colors in that a little more. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Those are all pretty kind of tails. I always like seeing those in aquariums. They're very beautiful. And see, because I did that, I want to put a little more red somewhere else too. Not any way to really explain what I'm doing, but it's what I do, what I live to do. All right, let's see what it looks like in the viewfinder. Well, I bet you can't see it that well at all because um, I know that these images on the camera are never as strong as what I'm seeing, but you can pretty much see what I did. I might add a little more yellow and then I'm going to quit. And this will probably be my most vague suggestions painting I ever did. I bet a lot of people say, where, where, where's the fish? <laughs> you got to really look in this one. The one I did before, which had a, um, a skull, which I thought was just so obvious. And I think I mentioned this before. I had my husband look at it and said, where? <laughs> he could not see it 
at all. And when I painted it, of course then he could, when I brought it out. But um, when it was not, when it was just in that nebulous cloud-like form, he couldn't see it at all. So, so much, it's one thing you learn when you are an artist is that we truly do see differently. Oh no, didn't like that at all. Bring that up higher. That's better. All right, I think I'm gonna quit. I still have essentially that painting that I started with. It's a little stronger and it's got some little fish swirling around. So thank you for watching. Be sure to click on the link in the description to see the final painting because I think I probably will go back into it a little bit and make the forms a little stronger. Maybe add a few more. Also, there's a link to my Etsy shop and other sites with my work.